All right, and the project I'm going to show you right now, um, what I've done is taken a photograph of Eddie Murphy and made it talk, similar to what you've seen recently uh, in the Geico commercials with the portrait galleries. So um, this is a little different. They're using a much more advanced technique with morphine and things. Um, I'm just doing a simple cutout talking animation. Um, but what's cool about this project, all of the animation is driven by a single audio file. So let's check that out. I'm gonna play this for you real quick just so you can see what it looks like. I think what really holds the movies together is uh, the relationship between Shrek and Fiona and that you connect emotionally, that you, you, you connect emotionally with those two characters. I think what really holds right, the movies so together is I'm gonna leave this playing, the relationship between but I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the volume so that I can talk. All right, so here's what's going on. I want you to notice there are three different, actually four different animations happening right now. I could have just moved that lower lip, but I wanted to add a little more movement into this photograph. So notice that the the lower chin is moving, and that's creating the main illusion of the talking. But also notice that the jaw right here, the section, is rotating downward. It's flexing like it would if you were talking. And then um, notice here around the nose area, that it is actually um, bulging in and out slightly, which is creating some facial stretching to help make it a little bit more of a cell. And then lastly, notice that the entire head is rotating slightly um, as the jaw is moving. Now, all of this is being driven by one audio parameter behavior that is on the jaw itself. I originally would have liked to have linked everything off of this chin, but um, there's a little glitch in motion that I'd love to see Apple fix uh, where basically you cannot use a Y position to drive a rotation value of another layer using the link uh, parameter behavior. I don't know why, um, but it just doesn't allow it to happen. However, inversely, you can use a Z rotation to drive a Y position. So basically, I've set everything up to animate off the jaw. So let's let's first start with our layers just to show you what's going on here. So I'm gonna show you each layer individually. So first, I'm gonna just shut everything off for you. So here's our blank project. Now, the base layer that I have here is uh, the shoulders, the body of Eddie. And then on top of that, I have the head. And now you can see it kind of looks funny right now with the head rotating and twitching. But um, basically, I've set the anchor point on the head. I want you to see this. It's important. The anchor point on the head is being, all the rotation is being driven right here in line with the spine, about where I would assume that the spine would connect into the head. So um, that's driving the rotation from that position. So then also you see this bulge happening here. That's because on that layer, I have a bulge effect. The bulge effect size is this area, and um, everything is linked. So you can see the bulge is linked back and is being driven by the rotation value of the jawbone. Um, and also the entire head rotation, which is this year, the entire head rotation also you can see is be being driven by the jawbone. So let's move on to our next layer. I'm going to head and um, I'll leave the head open for now. So now I'll re enable the jaw. So now you can see uh, the jaws moving here, which looks a little odd without um, anything else happening. But let's go ahead and hide the head so you can see that jaw layer. So that's what the jaw layer looks like on its own. Um, and it's feathered so that you don't see the edges of it. You get a nice, smooth, uh, soft blending back into the face. So, And then once the body is put back in, you know, you can still sort of see the edges. But... It, it just helped create some movement. Now this looks really crazy without seeing the lower lip. Um, so let's bring that back into play here. We'll bring back in the lower lip. Now again, you, this would look really unnatural. You don't want to see two lower lips. Um, so that's why I have this shape right here, which is just basically um, uh, just to avoid a shape that's between the depth-wise between the layer of the lower lip and um, the lower of the rest of the head so that when the lip moves downwards, um, 
it, it, it there's a black void there and you could get fancy with this and add in teeth and you know photo elements of the inside of a mouth for this project uh, I just wanted to show you the basic animation um, if you're into this sort of thing then I think you'll be able to figure out how to do add in teeth in the mouth and all that stuff anyway so um, then so let, let's just look at that um, the bottom of the mouth element here so here you see that is moving it's animated on the y-axis so if we look at this link here you'll see that's being driven again by the rotation of the jaw but it is uh, happening to the position Y. you can't inverse this I don't know why um, it's just something you can't do so that's the basic construction of this project um, and there it is. So basically, um, several duplicates of the same layer, and they're all, everything being driven by this one audio file. And so some people do this with keyframing. If you're using motion, don't use keyframes for this process, because you'll only be making your life harder if you ever want to alter what the soundtrack is saying. So, and what I mean by that, let me just show you right now. Let's bring this audio back up. I think what really holds the movies together is uh, the relationship between Shrek and Fiona. So actually right now, I think uh, this, the audio is actually driving this too hard. So I'm going to go back to the to the audio here, and um, you're going to see the scales at 0.9. I'm going to drop that down to like, actually it's 0 0.09, sorry, 0 0.07. The relationship between the see if we can make that a little less reactive um, let's just try 0.05 I think what really holds the movies together is uh, okay that's a little better between Shrek and Fiona. all right so you can take a look at my parameter settings here but basically I've got smoothness turned off I really want this to react it's only reacting to the upper range because I don't want the resonance of his voice affecting the animation um, I want it to react quickly but basically um, that's my setup uh, and you can play around with this. In my situation, um, I'm going to mute that again. All right, so in, in my setup here, um, he's not looking, he's looking eyes directly in the camera, but his face is turned to the side. I may not have done this whole jaw thing if the face was looking straight at the camera. So that's just something to keep in mind when you build your own project. But let's get back to why I use the audio behavior. So as I turn this up, if I want to replace this sound with... You know, I'm just going to move it down the track so it's a different portion of him talking. And here you'll see some silence. Let's just watch that. So it still has all of that sweetness. It's a, just a little edgier than the other Shrek movies. And I love Rumpelstiltskin. After the movie, I was just going on. I was like, so by having everything driven by uh, the audio parameter behavior, all the animation is um, can be completely... Will will adapt itself to your sound file. So I could put in the sound of, you know, somebody else talking, my own voice, and that voice would drive this entire animation. So it's really it makes it easier when you set up a project this way. If a client comes back to you and says, "Well, we need to change the script," and had you use keyframes, changing the script means that you would have to reanimate everything. But by having this all set up with parameter behaviors. Uh, it's no problem. I can drop in a new audio file and all the animation will just react to that audio file. So there's my tutorial. I hope um, it was helpful for you. And uh, just remember, have patience um, and make sure that you really understand how the linking and audio parameter behaviors work before you attempt this project or it could be very frustrating. So uh, good luck.